is organising its new diplomatic service. Today, ambassadors represent Europe in almost 130 countries around the world. Europol TV went to see the EU's man in Croatia. Talks on the reform of the common agricultural policy have begun. What place does organic farming have in the future reform? And a roundup of European headlines. Being a European Union ambassador keeps you on your toes. The agenda is always packed. My name is uh, Paul van Doren. I have the Belgian nationality. I grew up in Flanders. Here, uh, we have a, one very clear objective. It's the accession of Croatia as the 28th member state to the European Union. So my role is basically to accompany this process of negotiations by liaising with the authorities at all possible levels with academia, with civil society, with the business community. We're in Croatia, Zagreb to be precise. It's the country's capital. Since the 1st of December 2009, Paul Van Doren has been an official European Union ambassador, a post created by the Lisbon Treaty. We, as EU ambassadors, do represent exclusively the EU interests. And from that point of view, the role of the EU ambassador, by contrast before where, when we were head of delegation of the European Commission, uh, the, the role is indeed uh, significantly more important than before. Hello, Branko, how are you Hello, doing? How are you? Somehow also different than just the national, uh, national representation, uh, because they are presenting Belgium. one project which is so unique in our continent, bringing uh, peace, stability, and making Croatia also part of one big, big family, as Europe is. Back in the embassy, Paul Van Doren talks to us about the creation of the EU's First, new diplomatic service. will not wait until the end of the negotiations. Mm. I have experienced in my previous capacity in Moscow how much double work was being done between the individual or amongst the individual embassies and the <coughs> Commission delegation. Paul Van Doren is one of the pioneers of the new European diplomacy. In 2012, he'll leave Croatia, which should have become the next member of the European Union by then. Henri Doublier runs an organic farm near Paris. It took Henri almost 20 years for the 130 hectare colza and apple farm to go green. The changeover required heavy investment. Henri is clear that without the 48,000 euros he gets from the CAP each year, he would go bust. But he's disappointed that organic farming doesn't get a better deal in comparison to intensive agriculture. As it stands, the CAP hasn't delivered in terms of small and medium-sized farmers' needs and environmental standards. Given the effort put into fulfilling the technical obligations of organic farming, we haven't received the return on the investment made by each farmer. A situation that is gradually changing. Thanks to an EU law from 2009, each member state can promote organic farming by allocating direct aid from the CAP, a first. This means that Henri will get a payment of 100 euros per hectare. Mindsets are changing and the CAP is gradually becoming an instrument to promote environmental criteria. Future reform will undoubtedly give more importance to organic products. We must pr promote added value food products throughout Europe and organic is, is one of the biggest uh, 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 tools that we can use to promote uh, and encourage consumers to buy uh, very, very good quality food. Organic farming is booming throughout the EU. In 2008 it represented 7.8 million hectares, which is 25% more than 2005. Given this context, the CAP is slowly turning to sustainable agriculture. Today's European policy consists of rules applied to all the member states that are subject to harmonized checks. Rural development policy takes organic farming into account in order to promote its use. Future CAP reform raises hopes amongst the supporters of sustainable development. The outcome of negotiations will show if their expectations will become reality. The cap is back. The European Commission wants its farming policy to remain a strong tool. It defends maintaining aid for the agricultural sector in times of crisis and is considering new emergency support instruments. The battle over the 2014 budget for agricultural policy is set to be tough. The Commission has promised to deliver its vision of the pack in a year. In the meanwhile, it has launched a public debate on the place of agriculture in society. High-cost energy. 
52 billion euros on average per year. That's the cost of developing renewable energies in the EU by 2050, according to a report by the European Climate Foundation. Spain should become the main producer of solar energy in Europe, while France could provide much of Europe's wind energy needs. The EU has committed itself to cutting greenhouse gas emissions by 80% by 2050.